In this tutorial, we will try to get an understanding of texture profile analysis. Now, it is generally agreed that when it comes to food acceptability by a consumer, that three factors play an important role. And those are the appearance of the food, the flavor, and the texture of the food. In the industry, quite often, these attributes are evaluated using human sensory studies. However, there is considerable interest within the industry to develop mechanical tests that can mimic some of the sensory tests that are done to evaluate these attributes. In case of texture, work in this area has been going on for quite some time with the development of a texturometer developed at General Foods back in 1960s. This uh, texturometer allowed one to mimic the act of mastication prior to swallowing food. So a food sample was subjected to repeated loading and unloading over a specified number of times, similar to how a bite-sized food is masticated in the mouth. As a result of that early work, textural profiles were developed for different foods when they were tested with the texturometer. Let's see how a texturometer allows us to obtain a textural profile for a food sample. The idea behind a texturometer is uh, similar to what is called a universal testing machine, which is often used to determine engineering properties of such materials as metals, wood, concrete, and uh, polymeric materials. Uh, here there is a picture of an early version of a uh, universal testing machine. In fact, one I used in my own college days. In this uh, machine, there is a crosshead that can move up or down and a load cell that allows one to obtain information about the force and a testing tool, which could be of different shapes and sizes. For example, here it's a plate. And of course, there is a platform and a food sample is placed on the platform and then subjected to a certain load with this device. As we see in this uh, short video, a food sample is uh, subjected to repeated loading and unloading. Using the basic concept of the universal testing machine, there are many manufacturers who currently make these texturometers. For example, this device where a piece of hamburger meat is subjected to uh, different loading and unloading conditions. The response from this instrument is in terms of force versus time or distance. And that curve that we get from this instrument is called the texture profile for that particular food. So let's uh, look at one of these texture profiles obtained using the texturometer. This uh, profile shown in the figure uh, where we have force on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, there are two compression cycles. Each compression cycle has a downstroke and an upstroke. Each compression cycle also represents a bite that a food sample may experience during mastication. From this uh, texture profile, one can obtain several attributes that we will consider here. So the first item we can get from this plot is fracturability, which is the force where the first significant break occurs in the curve for the first loading. So as shown here in this figure. Hardness is the peak force in the first 
compression cycle, as shown here. Cohesiveness is obtained by taking the ratio of area under the curve for A2 divided by A1. Adhesiveness is another attribute that we can get by determining the area under the curve in region A3. Another term we can obtain is springiness, which allows us to determine how much does the sample spring back during the second compression cycle after allowing it to rest after the first cycle. It's uh, calculated as a ratio or a percentage as elapsed time T2 divided by T1 as shown in the texture profile. Incidentally, this value will be the same as the sample height in the second stroke as a percentage of the original height. The next parameter we can determine is gumminess, which is the product of hardness and cohesiveness. And the last parameter we can determine is the chewiness, which is the product of gumminess and springiness. Note that chewiness and gumminess are mutually exclusive because you cannot have a food sample that is both semi-solid and solid. We can also look at the uh, units for these quantities. Uh, for hardness and uh, fracturability, the units will be force. Cohesiveness is a ratio, so it's a dimensionless number. Adhesiveness is the area under the curve and the units will be in terms of work. The units of springiness, again, it's a ratio, so it's, uh, the units are dimensionless. And for gumminess, the units are force. And for chewiness, again, the units will be force. So in summary, we have looked at the texture profile obtained using a texturometer. Uh, as you will note, we can get seven different parameters. In another tutorial, we will look at some numerical examples of how we may determine these parameters using data obtained from a texturometer.